Okay, so welcome everyone. As we begin our session today, which is titled Confidence Reboot, Building Self-Esteem and Overcoming Social Fears. So let's start with just seeing ourselves in a grounding So be comfortable, give yourself permission to settle in and begin to take slow, deep breaths. So breathe in slowly. And with each inhala inhalation, just invite calmness and self-awareness. And with every exhalation, release any tension or any reservation that you may be carrying. Take a breath in and breathe out. Now gently direct your attention to any sensations in your body. This could be areas of tightness, discomfort, or even subtle feelings of anxiety or apprehension. Recognize, recognize these sensations as they are. Understand that they are somatic expressions connecting to our thoughts and emotions. And today we are not here to ignore or resist these bodily guardians, but instead we aim to tune into them, to learn from their messages, and to discover ways to soothe and reassure them. So we endeavor to connect with our deep self. This is a place of inherent worth, courage and insight. Throughout our session, we'll engage with these physical and emotional experiences with gentleness and openness. We will listen to what our body and feelings are communicating to us honoring each of them as an integral part of our personal narrative. This journey is one of self-discovery and healing, guiding us from uncertainty of self-doubt, social fear, to empowering ground of self-assurance and interpersonal ease. So let's enter this session with an intention of nurturing, growing, embracing all aspects of our being. Thank you for your presence and for the bravery you bring to this collective journey of change. So our session today, will get in the first 20 minutes we'll get into understanding self-esteem social fears we'll go into the roots and we'll also understand how it impacts our daily lives and then we'll get into what is the process of confidence reboot and then we'll prepare for our session today and then we'll get into ifs which stands for internal family system session, meditation, followed by sound healing, all towards what you have prepared yourself for. And then at the end of the hour, we'll open up for Q&A. And if there is anything that comes up, you're always welcome to express, ask questions. And we are here till everybody is clear with whatever they want to clarify. Okay, so let's get into the story so well self-esteem definition this is how you see yourself and your value which is the backbone of your decisions how you interact with others and also how is your overall mental health so high self-esteem means you feel reassured and resilient Resilient means you can weather any storm 
and come back strong. While low self-esteem is filled with doubt and self-criticism. So imagine feeling confident about your abilities and qualities versus constantly questioning your worth and capabilities. Now, social fears, this covers the range of anxiety and worries that you might feel in a social situation, which is mostly driven by fears of being judged, embarrassed or rejected by others. And it can be slight, a slight nervousness or a severe form of social anxiety. So for example, if you dread going to a social gathering or a party because you are worried about not fitting in or being judged by others, this is about looking at yourself from a social, uh, from a, uh, from a social fear. Okay. This is where social fear is active. Now, if you go deeper into self-esteem and social fears, they are both very intertwined. They are deeply connected to each other. If you have a low self-esteem, you might find yourself being uh, in a, in a, to be, you know, very, in, you may judge yourself being more intimidating, making social scenarios seem more daunting for you, which means being in a social scenario, you may find it a big uphill task. On the other side, if you have a negative social experience or you have a lot of social fear, then you may have a dent into your self-esteem and trapping you into a vicious cycle. So think about someone which gives you a neutral feedback, but it might feel like criticism to you, which then fuels your social anxiety, which then lowers your self-esteem and then you will avoid or struggle in social settings and it can become a vicious loop. Now your experience of self-esteem and social fears are unique. Each of us have our own story, which is basically influenced by your personality, your past experiences, cultural background, and the situations that you are currently facing. So it's important to rep recognize the spectrum and understand that these feelings can also change and you can make changes in them. So for example, the difference between fearing public speaking due to past embarrassing moment and fearing any social interaction due to deeper feeling of unworthiness are two different things, but they get intertwined. And your self-esteem and social fears are not static. They change over time. And they also change based on situations. So you might feel confident value in one area of your life and, but become insecure and anxious in another area. So like, for example, if you're very competent in your job and you're well supported there, you will feel it assured, but then you may have an issue in personal relationship or sometimes it's the other way around. So basically we see that there is a big in and uh, how do you call it, relationship between self-esteem and social fear and they are uniquely connected for each person. And so it's very important to understand these aspects deeply as you begin to recognize your patterns and underlying reasons behind your feelings. So this then inside lays groundwork for your personal journey of self-discovery and growth and which is what we want to undertake in this session. Okay, so the idea is to get to the to the underlying story. Now and then it's very important to understand the roots the origins. Now, your self-esteem is shaped from early life. They're influenced by your interaction with your parents, 
with your uh, caretakers, grandparents and others, teachers and peers. Now, positive reinforcement leads to high self-esteem, whereas criticism or neglect can lower it. Now, for example, if as a kid you are praised for your effort, you are likely to develop a sense of competence. Conversely, if you're often criticized, you might struggle with feeling of inadequacy or not good enough. My story, I was compared a lot. I had a younger sister. My parents used to say, my sister is very intelligent, very smart. This actually created for a very long period of my life, not good enough. And also a lot of fights with my sister I used to be jealous and it's not her fault. It was how I was made to feel. Now, social fears often stem from past experience of embarrassment and rejections or bullying. Now, these incidents can leave a lasting impact, making you very cautious or anxious in situ social situations. So if you remember a time when you felt humiliated in front of your classmates or made fun of in public, that moment will influence how you feel about public speaking or even engaging in social settings. Now, culture also plays a big role in social societal expectations. So your self-esteem and social fears also are shaped by your culture, your soci society and the norms that you are exposed to. Unrealistic standards of success, beauty, behavior can then exaggerate the feeling of inadequacy and social anxiety. Now, how social societal pressure confirms to certain ideals might make you fear judgment or rejection, which then impacts your willingness to be yourself in social context. I come from India. My parents wanted me to be an engineer from the highest institute in India. And this was an incredible pressure, which I could not go to. And that brought me a sense of failure and shame for years and years. Even though I turned out to be very well in my professional life afterwards, but, but it was a moment of shame that impacted me deeply for many years. Now, traumatic experience traumas also, of course, have a big impact, especially in childhood uh, that could have been affected to your self-esteem or social interaction. Uh, trauma for lead to deep-seated fears around trust and vulnerability. So if you think about an event that made you feel unsafe or invalidated in early childhood, such experience can lead to a protective system or stance in your social interaction fueled by your underlying fears. So in my corporate life, when my job was taken away about 14 years ago by wrongful means, I was absolutely devastated. And every time I would go to an interview, they would love everything about me, except they say he's very in, he doesn't have confidence on himself. So they rejected. Now, of course, then there is a story of social media and comparison. We know that in the digital age, social media plays a big role, especially if you are uh, into much more into social media where comparison of, of others curated lives can make you feel inadequate and socially anxious. Okay. We have seen studies, uh, especially on teenagers, how mental health gets affected by the use of uh, social media. I mean, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. So in summary, it's important to recognize and understand that where these feelings of inadequacy come from. Uh, either they come from life experiences, societal pressure, personal traumas or social media okay, uh, in your journey of healing. And by un identifying them, you are better equipped to at least address and work through them, setting a stage for uh, building a healthier self-image and more confident social interactions. Now, 
how does it impact your daily life? So, of course, it affects personal relationships. I mean, your self-esteem and social fears directly influence how you form and maintain personal relationship. Low self-esteem may lead you to doubt your worthiness in a relationship of love or friendship and making you more susceptible to staying in an unhealthy relationship or avoiding close connection together. I mean, feeling unworthy of your partner's affection, you may constantly seek reassurance, or which means you may build dependency, or conversely, you would avoid intimate relationship for fear of rejection or judgment. In a professional world, your career, in your career, self-esteem, social fears can be barriers to expressing your ideas, to expressing your competence fully, uh, taking on new challenges or taking on seeking promotions or growth. Okay, you might fear being judged or failure, holding back yourself from realizing your full potential. When avoiding opportunities to lead projects or speak in public meeting uh, because you are afraid of being rejected or ridiculed is one of the biggest thing that holds back. Okay, I remember after my burnout, uh, I used to always get this feedback that uh, you are good, but you have you lack confidence and motivation. So, and then of course it affects your general well-being and 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 mental health, and the ways you see yourself, and how you nav navigate your social situation, also affects your overall well-being. We know that low self-esteem uh, and heightened social fear can lead to extreme stress, anxiety, depression. And of course, overall decrease in how you see your life as satisfied or not. And this leads to many times feeling of loneliness and isolation. So understanding these impact as they highlight significance of addressing and working through those challenges. So recognizing how these internal feelings manifest in various ways in your life is a first step of making positive change because once you acknowledge then you can find ways to deal with it and that can of course improve your relationship or career success or better mind now how do we work on this so what is the process that we do and we are going to kind of practice this okay so the first one is embrace embrace all parts of yourself so this is one of the first thing and we will do it with uh, with a lot of compassion and curiosity. So as we embark on the journey, the first step is to recognize and embrace all parts of you. Understand that your feeling of low self-esteem and social anxiety are messages from your parts of you that got created when something happened in the past, but that are needing your attention and care. So when we approach this part with curiosity and with compassion, without judgment, they start to open up. So for example, and you, will, you can practice into day to day when you're feeling anxious about a social situation, instead of pushing that feeling away, if you just gently explore what that part of you is trying to protect you or communicate to you, it already helps. Just asking that simple question and we'll practice it today. The second one is engage in a dialogue, which is the next step. Once you connect to it, then when then you start to begin a dialogue with these parts from, from curiosity and compassion and ask them what they need and listen to their responses. And this internal conversation helps you to understand the origins of your fear or negative beliefs. And that can allow you to start to address them with kindness and understanding. So if you have a part which is afraid of rejection, ask it to share what is its fear. Understand the part's perspective can help you reassure it and build confidence and create bonding and deeper understanding. Create a safe space. Now, this is very important in the work we do is always make sure that 
in your internal environment where all parts of you feel safe and heard. So when we say, well, I'm feeling angry and I'm feeling disappointed. So it's like the part of you feels that you are angry with it or you are disappointed with it. Whereas actually it is feeling that way. And when you say, I understand you feel angry, you feel disappointed. Now I come to you and in a safe space, have a conversation with you. It starts to open up and it starts to say, well, I feel that I am in a safe space where I can express myself freely and will practice it. And then you incrementally expose and self-soothe. So gradually expose yourself to situations you fear using the support of your internal system for reinsurance and, and comfort. So as you start to become confident on having these dialogues, then you can start to bring more of those situations in, okay? Understand more of you. And after each such exposure, you engage with the self-soothing practice to calm and reassure your parts. And you can try it out. For example, if you're going to a social event where you know that you will feel unsafe or you will feel awkward, you can actually have a conversation with your fearful parts and let them know that they are safe and hear their concerns. And after the event, practice self-soothing technique, which helps you to have a, you know, it's like you have a closure of, we prepared ourselves, we went there, we had an experience, what did you feel? And so it helps them to feel heard. And so work towards creating harmony with the, among your parts, because sometimes they have different opinions. One is saying it's safe to go. It's another saying, no, it's not safe to go. Both of them are right. So you also start to learn to create communication of balancing needs of each of your parts and aligning them with your own goal. I want to have a good party or I want to be having this presentation on the stage where I feel confident. So that's your objective. So you bring all your parts, have a conversation before with them, understand what they are trying to communicate, learn their fears, and then have an experience and then go back and close. Okay, so that's what we are going to practice and do. Okay. So in this nuanced approach or rebuilding confidence, what we do is we, we, we try and see if we can embrace all parts of ourselves, engage with them with the meaningful self dialogue, create a safe internal space, practice, practicing incremental exposure coupled with self-soothing and striving for inner harmony. And then in the process, and we, we can also cover in Q&A, we'll also expose in case there are real traumas. So there's a process to then heal the traumas. Okay, so remember, this is a journey towards self-confidence. And so we will go into that. Okay. I know I've taken a little bit longer today, but I wanted to explain the process. Okay. Now, let's go to work. So I sent you a question before. I want you to take a moment as you are here and think about and take one situation which you want to work on which can be where you felt your self-esteem was challenged or your, you found you are uh, triggered in a social scenario or there are fears or triggers in a social scenario. So just find this and write it down for you. And by the way, you can always come back. We have recording. You can come back to this one and redo it from here onwards.
Okay, so take take this side one and then let's get into the work, okay? So I want you to just settle in. You can sit down, lie comfortably as you want, ensuring that your body feels supported and at ease. You can keep a paper and pencil nearby to jot down and inside as they arrive during the exercise or you may choose to reflect it afterwards. Either way is perfectly fine. As we start, I want you to bring your attention to your breath. So inhale slowly, deeply through your nose. Fill your lungs completely. Exhale slowly through your mouth. And when you exhale, releasing any physical tension or any mental concerns that you may be holding. So just spend a few moments with this breath. Now take a moment as well to go from your top of your head up to your toes and do a scan. And what you just see is if you have any sensations in your body. Just notice it, don't have to do anything. It's a scan, you go to your head, your shoulders, your neck, your chest area, belly, down up to your toes and just notice if there are any sensations you feel in your body. Now bring in the instance or issue you want to deal with associated with self-esteem or social fear. Just bring it into you. Okay? Think about it. The situation, what happens, everything. Just take a moment to connect to it, to bring it into your full awareness. If you see an image, it's perfect. But just notice any sensations or emotions that may emerge as you connect to this topic. Just notice any sensations that you feel in your body, emotions that come up or thoughts. And you may also see an image, which is okay as well. Just notice. So sensations in your body, around your body, could be in the form of tightness, tension, as you think about it, about the subject. Now see if you can shift your awareness to this physical sensation that may arise in your body, around your body, or if an image comes in. So just concentrate your attention towards it. Be aware of any tension, discomfort or other sensation that may surface. Now check in and see how you feel towards this sensation. If you detect any discomfort such as apprehension or anger or shame or guilt, just notice how you feel towards this sensation.
Now know that what you are feeling, the emotion you are feeling, is what is held by this part of you. So see if you can approach it with curiosity and compassion if you can, but curiosity at least, so that you can engage with them and understand about their intention and fears. So just see if you can approach that sensation in and around your body or an image with curiosity. So become curious. If you find difficult to become curious, just breathe into that space. Send your breath into that area in your body. from a place of curiosity, ask a question to this area, say, saying, what is your intention for me? What do you want for me? What is your intention or what do you want for me? And notice what you hear. See if you can acknowledge what you hear and understand. Just acknowledging, I understand this is the intention or this is what you want from me. Most of the time they are trying to protect you. So ask a question. What are you protecting me from? What are you afraid would happen to me? What are your fears? And see what you hear. Remember, stay curious and if possible, compassionate as you ask the question. Ask your following question, saying, if those re fears were realized, what do they imagine would happen next? Stay curious, stay compassionate, ask a question, saying what is your biggest or ultimate fear for me? And notice what you hear. Now this is what they are trying to protect you from. So see if you can acknowledge your understanding. 
to say, I understand what you're trying to tell me. And notice how it changes. Now ask another question. Since when are you playing this role for me? Or how old was I when you started to play this role of protecting me? Stay, comp stay compassionate as you may discover since when or from past experience when this part is being protecting you and just acknowledge Sometime they may show you what happened then. And just stay compassionate and not allow yourself to be overwhelmed. Now ask what would need to occur for this part to feel more relaxed and less dominant. What assurance or condition is it seeking to feel safe? Wait for the response. What needs to happen for this part to feel more relaxed and less present or dominant? If it resonates, make a note of any steps you can take to honor this need for safety and acknowledge your understanding to this part of yourself. Ask it if it would like to name itself for you so that you can come back and call it by name, any name. And just remember or take note of the name it tells you. Now just express your gratitude for their presence and their contribution to this process. And reassure that you are, will continue to engage with this and re revisit these conversations as frequently as possible when need be. And when you feel that process is complete, just begin to transition back into present moment. If you didn't take notes then, you can take notes on any insights or commitments.
and we stop to prepare for the tuning fork session. Okay, so we will start with the tuning fork session. For those of you who come in first time, again, remember the disclaimer in case you are going through chemotherapy or you had recent head injuries or sensitive to sounds, to sound, so just stay away. Okay, so what we do in the sound healing session is we use tuning forks to find this resonance into your field which could be connected to the topic we have done today and then work through it. Okay. So how it works is that I will open the channel, which is North pole, South pole, so below your body and top of your body, open the channel. Okay. And then use a pendulum to understand which chakra, if you use chakra or energy center would like to work. And then we go into that center, and then we go from the time of your birth, actually time of your conception. Okay. And we cross the timeline and wherever there is any disresonance, the tuning fork changes its frequency. I see it. You can also hear it. And I'm going to say, well, you were five years old or you are in the mother's womb and this is how it is feeling. So if it resonates with you, what you do is you connect to that moment because it will come to your awareness and then you use breathing and the breathing is something like you take a breath into through your nose, fill up your belly and then you breathe out through your mouth. Okay. Very strongly. And sometimes if it's very strong, the emotion, then what you do is you, you also do something like you release. Okay. So that's what you're going to do. So here we go. So I'm going to switch off my video. Okay, but you will hear me now and uh, just relax, go through the process and experience it. Okay, so I'm going to start below your feet and then we will go to the top of the head and then the uh, the pendulum okay okay so below your feet now so just breathe so I'm about one feet below your feet pointing the tuning fork up through your spine to the top of the head. So take a breath. So that was grounding. I'm going to go to the top of the head and open from the top of the head below the feet to, to the feet. So I'm now pointing down from top of your head to your backbone to the feet opening the channel. Take a breath. Okay, now I'm going to run a pendulum start from the below your feet or actually yeah from your feet through the chakras 
and based on what you are here to do and what you want to release it will tell me which center to work okay i'm on your root chakra no sacral no Okay, it is coming to solar plexus. It's saying yes. Just want to know whether it wants to work on the right side or left side. Okay, it changes his mind. Actually, wants to work on the heart chakra on the left side. Okay, we went through, yeah, it, it sometimes happens because of your, what you are looking for. Seems we are going to work on the heart center, so, you know, heart center, but on the left side, which is the mother side. Now, this part denotes sadness, grief, loss, and depression most of the time, okay? So what I will do is I will start from the time of your, actually when you are conceived and we will go through the time and come to present moment and just follow. If you're coming first time, don't worry, just follow. Okay. So the tuning fork will change. I'm using now 144 Hertz. Before I was using 174 and here we go. So. Mother's womb. Take a breath. So this is at the time of your conception. is going to the head head normally means the power authority in the house so most of the time it's father so what's saying is don't listen to what my father told me that was a word that comes in so see if you can tell the little one that is just being conceived. Don't listen to what you hear from your father. But now it moves to the chest and chest, so sadness. So, so see if you can send. Tell to the little one. Don't listen to what your father said. He didn't mean to. And if you want, you can release. Ha! <sighs> okay, so there's a lot of energy there. I'm going to change to another fork. But you stay with that and see if you can communicate if it makes relevance, to communicate with the little one, to say, don't listen to what you hear, don't feel sad. I am here for you. Take a breath. Okay, it eased.
So three months into pregnancy. So you have six months to be born still. And there is something coming in the in the solar plexus. Yeah, who are you? Now it could be a question that you hear from the outside world or from the mother. Why are you here? Who are you? So somehow affecting your identity as if, who am I? See if you can tell to that three months old little tiny baby. Any words about what she would like to hear who she is or he is? Yeah. If there's a pressure from father coming back, same words again. Listen to me. Don't listen to what you hear from your father. And see if you can send love to your mom as well, mother, because she's also in the same pressure. Yep, you did. It moved. So now in the time of the birth, it seems okay. Calm. Yeah. Just send love to the little girl, boy, to the mother. If you see nursing staff and hospital staff, just send love to all of them. And especially to the little one. Yeah, she's looking for some, he's looking, the little one is looking some assurance from you. Take a breath. It's going to be okay. Okay, so just one year old. Uh, yeah, about one year old. Very young. Something is going on there. Yeah, fears. A lot of fears. A 14 year old <laughs> goes straight to the identity solar plex. <sighs> so, in your own words, what would you say to the 14 year old? to assure him or her. Or what would you like to change there, if anything? Yeah. 
So draw that image or draw that scenario to the 14 year old. And this is what should have happened. Send love and care to the little one. There's compassion to it. And I was feeling a lot of sadness, heaviness in the chest now. Forty year old. In the second scent of fears, a lot of fears. Confusion. That's the word that came. I am lost. Again, reassurance. <sighs> Present moment, now. Just now something is going on. making you sad, so just take a deep breath into your heart <sighs> and release. <sighs> take a breath. Okay, we are going to release everything we have collected. Okay, so the process continues for the next 48 hours. We're just going to and I'm going to just cocoon you at 528 hertz. As we begin to close our session today, let's take a moment to consolidate the progress and the insights you gained. Let's begin by directing your focus to your breath. Inhale deeply, inviting calm and confidence. And exhale slowly to release any residual self-doubt or apprehension.
Reflect on the fact that, much like a collective, your inner world consists of diverse parts, each playing a key, unique role. Today you connected to one of them. With kindness and attention. Just take a moment to recognize the value that these parts bring to your system, their contribution and roles. Offer your gratitude to each of the part and assurance to your inner system affirming your commitment to continue this collaborative journey. As we conclude, remember that building self-esteem and overcoming social fears is an ongoing process, one that your inner community is fully equipped to support you. Trust in your capacity to evolve and be open to continued development of your confidence and social ease. Now take one deep breath. And when you're ready, slowly open your eyes. Come back to this environment. And we will open for Q&A now.